presentation contains current opinions of Moe Sansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor, and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice. We make no assurance that Moe's opinions or illustrations will accurately predict future prices or financial markets. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance. A detailed disclosure can be found at the end of the presentation. And now here's Mo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Compact YouTube update for September 30th, 2024. I'm Mo Ansari, President of Compact Asset Management, and thank you for joining me today. A weekly reminder, as we do every week, remind you to go to compact.com forward slash media. To get all of this information, the free YouTube updates, the podcast, the weekly newsletter, and all of the events that we do, you'll be notified simply by going to compact.com and forward slash media and registering. Make sure you click on the like button on this episode of YouTube so you can get a notification whenever I post an update. Looking at the numbers, markets are for the quarter. We're at the end of the month, end of the quarter, and it's been bumpy a little bit, but still nearly five and a quarter percent higher. We're down about these numbers as of Friday, but for uh, today we're down about a quarter percent for the S&P. So we're up still five and a quarter percent for the quarter. Uh, for the week last week, we were up 0.64 percent. Wonderful week uh, for the week, just a relatively quiet week, but quarter has been wonderful. And year, we're up 21.5%. And anybody told you at the beginning of the year, we've got an election coming up, or we could have a recession coming up, interest rate. I mean, there was so much noise out there that was causing all of this noise, but we saw literally nothing, and the markets have continued to go up. Now we're coming to the end of this quarter, which usually is the worst quarter of the year. We do have still a couple of weeks of October to deal with. We could have an October surprise, as it's called, in the election. So there's still a lot of moving parts here. We've still got a couple of more weeks of volatility, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Russell was down 0.13% last week. That's the small cap index. Not good uh, for the year. It's only up about 11%. Uh, NASDAQ was up 0.96% for the, uh, for the week and up 2.36% uh, for the quarter, and up 21.37. So quarter was much better for the S&P. And for the month, we're up about a percent and a half, percent and a quarter overall. So we are seeing the S&P continue to do well, and we're seeing a lot of different sectors starting to do better. It was just technology, technology, technology at the beginning of the year. But now we're starting to see materials come up, consumer discretionary, industrials, and then technology. Utilities are still well doing well, and they are the best sector this year. Who would th th thought that uh, utilities would be the best sector, but there's a tremendous demand, especially coming out of AI, there's demand for, for energy, and that is creating the utilities to be much more valuable. Healthcare was the worst sector last week, and we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Oil down, even though with the heightened, uh, heightened volatility, heightened uh, tensions in the Middle East, oil seems to be uh, doing okay. It's, uh, the oil market is indicating that, yes, the Israelis might go into uh, southern Lebanon, uh, but it will not have any major impact. There's no expectation that the Iranians are going to get involved, uh, because if the Iranians get involved, they, they are afraid that they're going to get uh, a lot of damage to Iran, and it could wipe out or could hurt uh, their infrastructure, which is oil. Uh, the oil market is not expecting that, otherwise oil prices would be higher. So uh, even with the heightened tension in the Middle East, oil prices are indicating that it's going to be southern Lebanon, uh, basically Israel is uh, weakened tremendously Hamas, which uh, again, they're, they're working on wiping that out. Now they're working on Hezbollah. And as I talked about three, four, five, six months ago, that as long as this war does not include Iran, uh, the rest of it Israel can deal with uh, fairly easily. Uh, looking at the 10-year, we are at uh, 3.75. Not much change from the week before. Interest rates are sort of stabilized. They were down to 3.6. As Javed and I talked about on the weekly podcast, in a lot of detail, we were expecting a bounce in rates, even with the Fed cutting half a percent a couple of weeks ago, but we we're still up slightly because the market had anticipated that it had gone down, we thought, a little bit too much and it's bounced up. 
But again, three and a half, 3.6 to 4% is about the range that we are going to see in rates. This is an e a interesting chart. It's in the weekly newsletter, which all of you have gotten already, and it is free if you subscribe to it. Uh, you can see that the companies with negative earnings, these are negative earnings, not positive, but companies that are not doing well. 42% of the companies in the Russell Small Cap Index have got negative earnings, compared to only 6% in the S&P. If you've heard the broadcast for the last 30 years, I've talked about what drives stock prices. It's profits, how many, what the company is doing, how much money a company is making. The more money a company makes, the more valuable their stock is. And with 42% of the companies not doing well in the Russell, that's why we see the Russell struggling, even with interest rates coming down, even which should be beneficial to small uh, cap companies because they can't issue bonds. They have to go and borrow from the bank. When rates come down, that's good for the small companies, but they have to really show us the, the earnings. Consumer confidence fell uh, to 98.7% uh, last week. Core PCE, that's the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index. That's the inflation index that the Fed watches. It went down from 2.7 year uh, to 2.2. So um, it is really coming down. Inflation, as I've said, uh, six months ago, a year ago, I thought it peaked and it should come, continue to come down. It's not a factor now. The factor we have to look at and what the Fed is basing its policy on where interest rates are going to go is based on unemployment. Unemployment goes up, the Fed gets nervous, they're gonna cut rates. I still expect two more interest rate cuts this year, quarter percent each, depending on how the unemployment, we get the unemployment report this Friday, and that'll show us uh, where the numbers are. Uh, we, uh, the expectation is we'll have to wait and see, uh, but you know, 100, 150,000 jobs, if you start getting in, in negative on those numbers, that would not be good. Then we get the PMI, that's the Purchasing Managers Index, which shows you they've got the, the Services Index and the, the Manufacturer Index, the two PMIs that come out. And uh, I think as long as we are somewhere uh, in, in the positive side, that would be okay. Looking at the charts, we continue to move higher. Uh, this looks like a third wave up. I think this could become wave one. This could become wave two. Right now we have one here and two here that could change and this could be an extension of wave three. Uh, we are at new all-time highs, or we were on Thursday and Friday. Now we're coming back a little bit today. We're down about, oh, somewhere around a quarter percent today. That's what we're looking at overall in the markets right now as I'm doing this update, which is about an hour before the close on Monday. So still support is at 56.53. We are at 57.29 today. Uh, so that's the 20-day moving average right here. And this is the 50-day moving average. We should see a fourth wave pullback somewhere and then a fifth wave rise. This could be wave three, but how long wave three will go, we'll have to wait and see. On the weekly charts, again, wave three continues to the upside. Somewhere we are going to see wave four and then wave five. Uh, but this again goes back about three, four years so it could be later on this year or early part of next year where we see wave four on the weekly charts. NASDAQ daily continues to move higher, but we have not made all-time highs, which are right here uh, in July. We have not made, and now we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. Looking at the weeklies, our dot plot, it was up here. As you can see, these bars are weekly charts. As long as the market is below, that's not good. Uh, but now the dot is down here. It's all the way down here. So the market has turned positive. Usually what we see when the dot plot turns up, sometimes we see a little bit of hesitation in the market. Uh, here it turned up right here. This October, we had a little bit of a pullback and then we took off. Uh, here we turned up, did not see much of a pullback. Uh, the dot plot turned positive and stayed positive for long periods of time. Once it turns positive, Usually we see long periods on the upside, and that's what we're seeing, unless we're in a long-term bear market. This was 2022. You can see that uh, the market continued to move lower into October of 20. This was 22 and 23, going back here. So we are going to see somewhere a uh, pullback, but again, as long as we're above 17.3, 17.4, 17.5, 17.6, 17.7, 17.8, 17.9, 17.10, 17.11, 17.12, 17.13, 17.14, 17.15, 17.16, 17.17, 17.18
and 16.2, we're okay. And the dot plot just has turned positive. So if we do see a pullback, we're at 18,000 today, somewhere down to 17.5. I think that could set up a buying opportunity in the NASDAQ. And you might see that over the next couple of weeks. 10-year note, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we were down here, we popped back up. Uh, this is the 50-day moving average on the yield, 3.864. Today we are 3.80. So somewhere uh, between here and here, I think as long as we stay here, we're okay. And uh, just back and forth, we're expecting a bounce and then another decline in rates. We'll have to wait and see. Crude oil bounced up a little uh, from the fifth wave bottom. Now we're seeing a little bit of a pullback, but with this bottom should hold uh, around 66. That's what we saw. Small cap weeklies bounced off the 20-week moving average, which is 211. We're at 218 today. So as long as we stay above 211 or really around 201, which is the 50-week moving average, and then the next resistance right here, 230, get above 230, go to 245, which is this high right here. And if we can get above 245, and the target, long-term target, is 258 to 285. Gold seems like it's made a fifth wave top. Seems like it's starting to come back. This is 2600 right here. We're 2650 today of 49. Uh, I think uh, somewhere between here and here, 2600 to 2650 could set up. Now that we've made a fifth wave, we should see an ABC pullback in the market. Those are the usually trends. Those are my thoughts. Again, if you want a detailed view of what we are thinking, Javed and I will do the uh, podcast later on where we are going to talk about all of these topics in a lot more detail. So make sure you subscribe to it by going to compact.com forward slash media. All of the information is free. Again, if you need help with your portfolio, give us a call or just drop us an email at invest at compact.com. I'm Mo Ansari, president of Compact Asset Management. Thank you for joining me today. Those are my thoughts. Those are my observations. I will be back with you at the same time on Monday next week. Until then, good trading. presentation contains the current views and opinions of Moise Ansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compaq Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. The views expressed are current only as of the date of this presentation and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice and nothing is personalized to any investor's individual circumstances. Compaq Asset Management offers investment advice only after entering into an investment advisory agreement and gathering client-specific information about goals, objectives, financial status, and risk tolerance. This presentation uses terminology associated with technical analysis and provides charts to illustrate some of the concepts discussed. Technical Technical analysis is a security analysis method with the goal of forecasting the direction of prices of securities or market indices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. We make no assurance that past performance or the use of technical analysis will accurately predict future prices. Further, a risk of technical analysis is that overfocus on historical patterns could lead to ignoring or downplaying security-specific concerns, overall market or sector concerns, or other factors because we assume inaccurately that historical patterns will repeat themselves. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance information about goals, objectives, financial status, and risk tolerance. This presentation uses terminology associated with technical analysis and provides charts to illustrate some of the concepts discussed. Technical analysis is a security analysis method with the goal of forecasting the direction of prices of securities or market indices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. We make no assurance that past performance or the use of technical analysis will accurately predict future prices. Further, a risk of technical analysis is that overfocus on historical patterns could lead to ignoring or downplaying security-specific concerns, overall market or sector concerns, or other factors because we assume inaccurately that historical patterns will repeat themselves. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance.